travel and speak at conferences all the time and I never get tired because they create this microcosm of community where you get to network, innovate, and communicate with your peers as well as your fiercest competitor. When we look at networking as what we can do for others, that's when it becomes valuable. That's when it becomes positive. That's when it becomes powerful. It's not about what I can get from you, but what I can do for you. We don't have to be in an office or a boardroom. We just have to be with one or more people around us. Nothing is optional. It's all an opportunity. It's your chance to, as I like to say, share your challenges, search for solutions, and celebrate success to find the key to opening our next dream and that of someone else's. I truly believe that it's when we help others, we achieve ourselves. Now there is a fine line, I must remind you, between networking and stalking. Sometimes it's worth asking yourself, is it cocktail talk or your cocktail talking? Office jokes aren't funny the day after if you can't remember them. Enjoy the mood you're in and it will be contagious because when we're positive, we empower, and when we are positive, we elicit a positive response. When we better know who we are, we better know what we can give. Whether a steak dinner, D-scoop, a burger joint, or our own homes, we can be powerful. We can be networking. You know, you spend the year after year talking about ROI and a return on investment. But I like to talk about something I call R-O-E, return on experience. And you will have an incredible return on experience this week for the next coming days as you all eat, drink, and succeed at D-Scoop. And I tell you, back at the White House, well, I saw a lot of people come, and they ate, and they drank, and they left with a White House towel stuffed in their pockets. But then there were others who came. Others who came who were able to eat, drink, and turn relationships into partnerships, and ideas into reality. Networking, I got to be the first one to admit, I sometimes am not a big fan of the word. And I think when we look at networking as what we can do for others, that's when it becomes valuable. That's when it becomes positive. That's when it becomes powerful. I don't think anybody explains networking better than this guy did years ago. And so, my fellow Americans, ask not what your country can do for you. Ask what you can do for your country. That's right. That's not what someone else can do for you, but what you can do for them. It's when we build bridges for others to where they get to go in life, that's where we find out what bridges we're meant to cross. Or if we're gonna need that bridge six months from then or six years from then, we will have built it for someone else and made it stronger for ourselves. Because when we help others, we achieve ourselves. As a kid, I'd always go to these church functions and get raffle tickets with my parents for different prizes. And on the back of the ticket, it always says, must be present to win. And it's true. You know, we must be present to win in life, at the dinner table with our kids, in a staff meeting here at D-Scoop. This happens to be 1886. It's a beautiful painting by George Seurat. It's called A Sunday Afternoon on the Isle of La Grande Jatte. And last year, a South Korean painter named Kim Dung-kyu redid masterpieces of old as if they were painted today, and he chose this one, and guess what? Yep. <laughs> but just as technology brings with it a responsibility, you know, we too each have a responsibility to the present. Because when we are present, we are of more value to our companies. We are more present and we are more value to our families, our relationships, our colleagues, our fellow members of D-Scoop, and ourselves. We simply must be present to win because we can't afford 
to miss a moment in life. We start by setting the scene. We've got bridges to build. We know the right people to find to help somebody else. And when we set the scene, and we do what I like to call social diagramming, we can already figure out through our charity events and the gym and uh, church and alumni and professional organizations who we sit next to that we otherwise wouldn't have met before. You know, when it comes to the casting call, just like every actor has to find the right opportunity, we want to find the right event where we can make things happen. And you may look at things as optional versus opportunity, like, oh, I don't have to go to that networking thing. That's optional. Nothing is optional. It's all an opportunity. Then it's time for the dress rehearsal. And I tell you, this is where it really comes together because I like to say that we must prepare for partnership. The power of you. Who am I? Why am I here? You ask yourself that question maybe tonight when you're brushing your teeth before you go to bed or maybe once a week when you take a walk on the Saturday when you take your dog out in the morning. You might get the answer back from yourself that this is who I want to be, but not how I thought I'd be doing it. When we better know who we are, we better know what we can give. It's showtime. Jackie Kennedy had a rule at the White House that everybody could be invited to an event with a guest. But when they crossed the threshold of the state dining room, they could never sit together. This was her way to entice conversation. So you didn't just have people coming as couples sitting down, talking to each other all night when there's all these other great people at the table to explore and to learn from and to speak with. So reach outside of your circle, sit next to somebody new. And then the power of alcohol. <laughs> you know, it's much better to remember the jokes the day after the event at the water cooler than be the butt of them. And then lastly, the power of listening. When we listen, we empower the other person. When we listen, we gather information. And because we know our social scenes, and we're listening to this person, we're hearing what they want to do in life, where they need to go, and we already know how we can build that bridge for them. Sometimes listening to somebody is the best gift you can give. But you can't stop there. You can't. you got to go on to the encore. Because the encore is, at the end, you want to get people up on their feet. You want to keep them standing. And you do that by the power of follow-up and follow-through. Because whether you're at a state dinner with Steven Spielberg or at a burger joint with Oprah, or right here at the Lila Corkle Theater with HP and D-Scoop, you guys, it's showtime. This is it, and it's your time. Thank you very much, everybody. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you.